my dear brothers and sisters whom I love, the reality is that someday you and I will each have an individual face-to-face -face interview with the Savior Himself. When this eventuality becomes real to us, we will be willing to do whatever it takes to be prepared. So now a question as I conclude. What if you learned that the Savior had already returned to this earth, that He, as part of His Second Coming, had already met with some of His true followers in several marvelous large gatherings, gatherings about which the world, including CNN and the blogosphere, knew nothing? If you found out that the Savior was already on the earth, what would you desperately want to do today, and what would you be willing and ready to do tomorrow? Spiritual impressions I have received about you lead me to believe that the term millennial may actually be perfect for you, but for a much different reason than the experts may ever understand. The term millennial is perfect for you if that term reminds you of who you really are and what your purpose in life really is. A true millennial is one who was taught and did teach the gospel of Jesus Christ pre-mortally and who made covenants with Heavenly Father there about courageous things, even morally courageous things, that you would do while here on earth. A true millennial is a man or woman whom God trusted enough to send to earth during the most compelling dispensation in the history of this world. A true millennial is a man or woman who lives now to help prepare the people of this world for the second coming of Jesus Christ and His millennial reign. Make no mistake about it. You were born to be a true millennial. I urgently plead with each one of us to live up to our privileges as bearers of the priesthood. In a coming day, only those men who have taken their priesthood seriously by diligently seeking to be taught by the Lord Himself will be able to bless, guide, protect, strengthen, and heal others. Only a man who has paid the price for priesthood power will be able to bring miracles to those he loves and keep his marriage and family safe now and throughout eternity. In these latter days, we know there will be earthquakes in diverse places. Perhaps one of those diverse places will be in our own homes, where emotional, financial, or spiritual earthquakes may occur. Priesthood power can calm the seas and heal fractures in the earth. Priesthood power can also calm the minds and heal the fractures in the hearts of those we love. My dear brethren, we have been given a sacred trust, the authority of God to bless others. May each one of us rise up as the man God foreordained us to be ready to bear the priesthood of God bravely, eager to pay whatever price is required to increase His power in the priesthood. With that power, we can help prepare the world for the second coming of the Savior, Jesus Christ. Our divine mandate is to go to every nation, kindred, tongue, and people, helping to prepare the world for the second coming of the Lord. This we will do.
with faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, knowing that he is in charge. This is his work and his church. We are his servants. We're just at the exponential phase of growth, yes, but it will continue. The Lord said, I will hasten my work in its time. And he makes good on his promises. We're witnesses to a, a process of restoration. If you think the church has been fully restored, uh, you're just seeing the beginning. There's much more to come. Wait till next year. <laughs> and then the next year. <laughs> Eat your vitamin pills. Get your rest. <laughs> it's going to be exciting. Now, as president of his church, I plead with you who have dis distanced yourselves from the church and with you who have not yet really sought to know that the Savior's church has been restored, do the spiritual work to find out for yourselves. And please do it now. Time is running out. We pray that this conference will be memorable and unforgettable because of the messages you will hear, the unique announcements which will be made, and the experiences in which you will be invited to participate. For example, at the conclusion of the Sunday morning session, we will convene a worldwide solemn assembly when I will lead you in the sacred Hosanna shout. We pray that this will be a spiritual highlight for you as we express in global unison our profound gratitude to God the Father and his beloved Son by praising them in this unique way. President Nelson has designated this year as a bicentennial period commemorating 200 years since God the Father and His beloved Son, Jesus Christ, appeared to Joseph Smith in a vision. President Nelson invited us to make a personal plan to prepare ourselves for this historic conference, which commemoration, he said, would be a hinge point in the history of the Church. And your part is vital, he said. In the past several weeks, most of us have experienced disruptions in our personal lives. Earthquakes, fires, floods, plagues, and their aftermaths have disrupted routines and caused shortages of food, staples, and savings. Amidst all of this, we commend you and thank you for choosing to hear the word of the Lord during this time of turmoil by joining with us for General Conference. The increasing darkness that accompanies tribulation makes the light of Jesus Christ shine ever brighter. Just think of the good each of us can do during this time of global upheaval. Your love of and faith in the Savior may very well be the catalyst for someone to discover the restoration of the fullness of the gospel of Jesus Christ. In the past two years, Sister Nelson and I have met with thousands of you around the world. We've convened with you in outdoor arenas and in hotel ballrooms. In each location, I have felt that I was in the presence of the Lord's elect and that I was seeing the gathering of Israel occur before my eyes. We live in the day that our forefathers have awaited with anxious expectation. We have front row seats to witness live what the prophet Nephi saw only in vision. 
that the power of the Lamb of God would descend upon the covenant people of the Lord who were scattered upon all the face of the earth. And they were armed with righteousness and with the power of God in great glory. You, my brothers and sisters, are among those men, women, and children whom Nephi saw. Let's think of that. Discipline yourself to have time alone with your loved ones. Open your heart to God in prayer. Take time to immerse yourself in the scriptures and worship in the temple. My dear brethren, there are many things the Lord wants us to learn from our experiences during this pandemic. The future is bright for God's covenant-keeping people. The Lord will increasingly call upon his servants who worthily hold the priesthood to bless, comfort, and strengthen mankind and to help prepare the world and its people for his second coming. It behooves each of us to measure up to the sacred ordination we have received. The general authorities and general officers of the church who speak will focus their messages on our Savior, Jesus Christ his mercy, and his infinite redeeming power. There has never been a time in the history of the world when knowledge of our Savior is more personally vital and relevant to every human soul. Imagine how quickly the devastating conflicts throughout the world and those in our individual lives would be resolved if we all chose to follow Jesus Christ and heed his teachings. In that spirit, I invite you to listen for three things during this conference. Pure truth, the pure doctrine of Christ, and pure revelation. Contrary to the doubts of some, there really is such a thing as right and wrong. There really is absolute truth, eternal truth. One of the plagues of our day is that too few people know where to turn for truth. I can assure you that what you will hear today and tomorrow constitutes pure truth. The pure doctrine of Christ is powerful. It changes the life of everyone who understands it and seeks to implement it in his or her life. The doctrine of Christ helps us find and stay on the covenant path. Staying on that narrow but well-defined path will ultimately qualify us to receive all that God has. Nothing could be worth more and all our Father has. When renovations on the Salt Lake Temple are completed, there will be no safer place during an earthquake in the Salt Lake Valley than inside that temple. We are sparing no effort to give this venerable temple, which had become increasingly vulnerable, a foundation that will withstand the forces of nature into the millennium. Begin now to learn and experience what it means to be armed with priesthood power. And to each of you who has made temple covenants, I plead with you to seek prayerfully and consistently to understand temple covenants and ordinances. Spiritual doors will open. You will learn how to part the veil between heaven and earth, how to ask for God's angels to attend you, and how better to receive direction from heaven. 
Your diligent efforts to do so will reinforce and strengthen your spiritual foundation. Please believe me when I say that when your spiritual foundation is built solidly upon Jesus Christ, you have no need to fear. As you are true to your covenants made in the temple, you will be strengthened by his power. Then when spiritual earthquakes occur, you will be able to stand strong because your spiritual foundation is solid and immovable. I love you, dear brothers and sisters. These truths I know. God, our Heavenly Father, wants you to choose to come home to Him. His plan of eternal progression is not complicated, and it honors your agency. You are free to choose who you will be and with whom you will be in the world to come. God lives. Jesus is the Christ. This is his church, restored to help you fulfill your divine destiny. I so testify in the sacred name of Jesus Christ. Amen.